Hello everyone, I'm Extra Cheesy 87 and this is Let's Play of Danganronpa V3 Part 26. In the previous video, we were investigating Angie's death and then uh, Tenko went and bent the dust and now we're investigating her death as well because, uh, I don't know, everybody's gonna die eventually, right? May as well get it out of the way. There's a rock next to Tenko's body. This must be... Please rest your forehead upon the stone marker I've placed here. Yeah, we've kind of already... We, we, I mean, we just saw that last video. You know, we, we still kind of remember what's going on. Or at least I do. Tinko had her hair, forehead on this rock hunched over. We had to make ourselves small to fit inside the cage. Hmm. Hmm. Tinko's dead body. She took her last breath, crouched over like this. According to the Monokuma file, her only injury is a stab wound to her head, to her neck. This wound was fatal. Hmm. It's supposed to cause instant death. I couldn't hear a scream during the seance. Wait. Understood. I will not say a word until the seance is over. Would Tinko really keep her mouth shut despite the pain? I mean, it'd be really, really dumb, but... I guess maybe in the dark, she could have just thought that the pain was the ghost entering her body, not being stabbed. I don't know. Nope. Her death might have been instant, but she couldn't have gone far when she bled out. Huh? What do you mean? What's the point? You were concerned about that, right? Okay. The wound this deep, the victim is too shocked to do anything except die. Uh, um... You're, uh, speaking from experience? That's obvious. Of course. Quick deaths are my specialty. Well then, uh, that makes sense. By the way. The real question is, what was she killed with? I don't see a murder weapon around. You're right, I don't see an obvious murder weapon. That could be a clue. Ah, oh, this floorboard is loose. And it's the one right under Tinko. Why? Why is this floorboard loose? If I remember correctly. It wasn't like this before. It must have come loose during the seance. Why? Quit saying why. Why would it come loose during the seance? But a floorboard this thick and heavy wouldn't have come loose easily. And so must have loosened it on purpose. Okay, it's going a lot quicker than I thought it would. This is the cage, because I was thinking, you know, maybe this would take like a like a while to go through all this uh, evidence. This is the cage used in the seance. Is this? It looks like I might be three feet high and five feet wide. It's a pretty large iron cage. Okay. Big enough for a person to fit inside. We were supposed to remove it as well. But it was Himiku who rushed in to remove the cage first. Yeah, that could be important. I mean, I'm not entirely sure Himiko's not, you know, I mean, I kind of entertain the idea that she killed Angie for one reason or another, but I don't know. Hey. Look at this. Is this? A blood stain on the bottom of the cage? Probably Tinko's blood, yeah? That's true. I imagine so. The splatter must have been made when she was killed. I mean, I guess. What do you mean? Which means Cinco was killed while she was inside the cage. Okay. I think you're right. Cinco went under the cage before the seance. But when the cage was lifted after the seance, she was already dead. Then? He was stabbed right when the cage was lifted. That would explain this blood stain, right? Um, huh? perhaps she wasn't killed during the seance or the exact moment the cage was lifted? No, because there was already blood there. That is a possibility. Because, I mean, when, as soon as the they turned the lights back on, we saw the blood under the sheet, so... Unless there's a second wound or something, you kind of have to, uh... I mean, I guess you could go with the, the, they're like, oh, Himiko maybe stabbed her right at that moment when she rushed forward ahead of everyone else, but, uh, that doesn't really make any sense. Or it doesn't really jive with what the game showed us. There's a small opening in the corner of the room. There's a space under the floor and something is down there. Before I can check, I should finish looking around. Okay, we're not done. Um. Hmm. 
I already talked to you. That, I mean, it's just Kibo. Leave it to me. It almost like there's something we can interact with over there, but I'm not seeing it light up with anything. Anything up here? No. Oh, the statue. It's the wind dog statue used in the sands. I believe it's called the Dog God. They're in the sands. This wooden statue was on top of the cage. It took four of us to remove it. Hmm. This wooden statue is pretty heavy. If I remember correctly. You said it was about 175 pounds. That's about the weight of two girls. What? What, what do you know about girls? Have you even touched a woman besides your mother? Uh, um, what, what? I'm kidding. Anyway. Is this? This heavy thing was on top of the cage, and Tinko wouldn't be able to get out easily. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're right about that. That didn't sound like you were kidding earlier. Oh no, it's me, right? Hey. Is Shuichi a quote-unquote fucking virgin? Maki, we've finished investigating up here. Perhaps we should check under the floor. By the way. It seems pretty dark down there. What should we use light for? That's true. Or what should we use for light? Let's bring a candle. With Kibo's light from up here, we should be fine. Okay. Hmm. Then I'm gonna get a candle. Remove that floorboard so we can go down. Okay. Okay, yeah, got it. I pulled off something, some of the floorboards in the hole and took a candle from Maki. Then we carefully made our way through the hole and under the floor. By God. There's a lot more spacious than I thought. You can do pretty easily move on all fours. So okay. there's a second blood stain. Let's look around for clues. Well, I'd look pretty stupid if we found no place, no clues after crawling around in this dusty place. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so maybe this could have been the original blood that we saw under the cave. I mean, that doesn't really make any sense though, because the blood wasn't there originally, but uh. I mean, this one is dry. There's a blood stain on the ground underneath the loose floorboard. That's pretty far from where Tinko's blood is dripping down. It's under the same floorboard, just at different ends. Why is there blood here? Hey. Back of this floorboard has blood on it, too. Oh. You're right, there's a bit of blood on the underside of this floorboard. What do you mean? Did Tinko's blood splatter get here when she got killed? No. That's true. I wonder. I can't really be sure yet. Okay. But these blood stains here are completely dry. I see some reason these particular stains are dry. Okay. Well, there's two options, right? That popped in my head. A, somehow Angie was actually killed here originally. And that's her blood, or it's the killer's blood. Um, like it could have been that like they came and hit out here to set up the seance death after they killed Angie? Oh. Look, part of the crossfit that supports the floorboard is cut off. That's true. You can see the loose floorboard and a per portion is missing is about the same width too. When I can see of it. That's true. It wasn't cut off naturally. This was cut by, it wasn't broken off naturally. It was cut by someone. There should be saws in the warehouse so they could have used that. The question is why. So, I mean, there was some setup time. Another cross piece is supporting the floorboard, so it might not fall if this portion is missing. Then... What purpose did this serve? Floorboard underneath Tinko's body is loose, and the cross piece supporting it hasn't cut. If the culprit did all this, then why? I mean, I guess that would have maybe caused it to collapse, which would have made that noise? Well, no, because, I mean, you still have these other stuff to support. I don't know. I mean, I guess it could have caused her to fall down in, if she's, you know, kind of turtled up. Blood dripping from the gaps in the floorboards. Fresh blood. This is definitely Tinko's. Some of the wood is corroded and is broken off so you can see into the next room. Hey. This is the wall of the empty room, right? Looks like there's wood along the wall. This part is rotted away. Hmm. Looks like natural rot. This hole wasn't made intentionally. But I can get into the next room through here. That's true. If remember correctly, the room next door is also empty, right? And the culprit could have gone from room to room by moving under here instead of using the hallway. No. True, but it would have been difficult moving around under the floor. We did all right because we had light. Without that, it'd be pitch black. That might make it impossible to move around in there. Nope. And they could have used the light like we were doing right now, but we would have probably noticed. Well. 
Can you use the light to move around under the floor? Is that possible? I mean, I would assume the light would kind of shine up through the floor a little bit, and, and it would make it a little obvious. Considering it was completely pitch black in the room. I mean, I guess they could have waited to only move once the other lights were on, but there's a sickle here and there's blood all over it. Okay. The blood in the sickle is fresh. This is it. This is the murder weapon. Is this? This came from my research lab. Huh? It did? Well. The sickle could be used to assassinate a target. It can be thrown without losing any lethality, and you can hide it under your clothes too. Well. You know what else you can hide under your clothes and use at long range? A gun. If she was attacked with this. She wouldn't stand a chance. The blade is about six inches. That's right. Since Tico was in the cage, she wouldn't have been able to defend herself. But... Even if this is our murder weapon, how did the culprit attack Tinko in the cage? Blade could fit through the gaps in the cage, but could it reach her neck? That's true. Cage is three feet high. If you were to stab with a six-inch blade, well, it would depend on Tinko's posture, but I don't think it's impossible. But, I mean, you know, the sheet. And her posture is the question. Hey. If the weapon is down here, the culprit must have thrown it away, right? That's true. Perhaps after killing Tinko, the culprit threw the sickle under the floor in the dark? Well, they could have been under the floor the entire time. Either of those is possible. But, I mean, they couldn't have stabbed from above because, you know, you would have to put a hole in the sheet. Is that all right? Maki, you want to head back up? <sighs> Glad you asked. I was starting to get fed up with all this dust. After Maki and I crawled off from under the floorboards, we put the... Under the floor, we put the floorboards back. Return to our investigation. I, mean, I guess we should go check the other room, right? By the way, we've only been investigating this room. You sure that's wise? Huh? What do you mean? Because Angie and Tinko have different killers, and the black one you need to vote for is You're right. Culprit for the first murder, the one who killed Angie. That's what Monokuma said. Then... Instead of investigating Tinko's death, shouldn't we be investigating Angie's? Uh, okay. Yes, of course. But this is bigger than the killing game. For the sake of the two who died, I need to reveal the truth of both their deaths. Hmm. I understand why you feel that way. If you plan on investigating the other crime scene again, we should probably hurry. I, mean, I do think it's an interesting idea, the fact, or the potential implication that we might find out who, like, if it is two different killers, or that we just kind of have to, like, you know, go on coexisting with the person who killed Tinko. I came to the hallway. It seemed more surprising than I could ever imagine unfolded. Oh, shit. Now that's surprising. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. I was like, I was, like, was going to be a little mad if they'd actually killed off Kokichi. Like, three characters in the same game, in the same trials a bit much. Did I surprise you? Were you going to scream and cry and tear? Huh? What are you doing? Oh? Sorry, I'm just a little lightheaded from the blood loss. Yeah, this is real blood. Why? So, what are you doing? Hmm. I got curious about something. I decided to try and search the empty room next door. Then suddenly, <laughs> I stepped through the floorboard. Huh? You stepped through a floorboard? That's so mean. Jeez, that got me good. Because of this, I tripped and fell pretty hard. Got a minute? If you're going to lose consciousness. Do it after you tell us everything. Ah. Oh, sorry. My bad. I guess there was no cross piece supporting the floorboard, so I kind of stepped through. I mean, I do think that's a funny little, you know, because anytime the game does that, when you know it fades to black and they go, and then I saw something incredible. It's like always somebody dies. So that's kind of a neat little. Subversion, I guess. There's there no cross piece supporting the floorboard, so I kind of stepped through. <laughs> what bad luck. The cross piece was gone. Does that mean... Oh, we don't get to investigate huh? anymore? Confidence. Dreams. That's what the killing game is all about. Okay, can, can, I, can I... Did he say which room it was? The empty room next door. I guess it doesn't really matter which one it is, but I would like to know. Killing game fans, hold your head high and watch with your own two eyes. Baseball, soccer, mobile games, they're all nothing compared to the killing game. The killing game just can't be beat. Behold, students, the entrance to the trial grounds. I guess time's up. Oof. Oh man, it's because of you guys. I didn't have time to check something. Huh? 
What were you trying to check? See? I wanted to research the seance again, so I brought this document with me. But unfortunately... Man. I couldn't find anything new that could be used as a clue. Kyo perfectly reenacted the seance as what was written as what was written in the document. He drew his magic circle the exact same way as in the picture. Not only that, he used the same exact tools too. Nothing suspicious about this whole thing. Well, I want to check the finer details, but I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> At the class trial, so see you there! Kokichi left. The blood loss clearly affecting his footing a bit. Bloody Kokichi. Okay, I also kind of found that odd they didn't add that as a truth bullet, but... Step through one of the floorboards. The room also had part of the cross piece cut off, the portion that supported the floorboard. Hang. Uh, um. Let's go to. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Is Maki nervous? I see. So even she gets nervous sometimes. Do you want to die? What are you staring at? Do you want to die? I don't know. Honestly, I found Maki a little suspicious during the whole investigation, but, um... Just, I don't know, some of her reactions just felt a little... a little off to me. But I'm trying to think, like, no one's really jumping out at me. As far as potential killers go. Because, I mean... I mean, I think it's possible that Tinko is the one who killed Angie, um, and therefore would be the one that, uh, we would want to convict. And then, who killed Tinko? I mean, honestly, I mean, Himiko seems to make the most sense, right? If she, if Himiko thinks that Tinko killed Angie, Himiko kills Tinko to get revenge. Um. Kokichi. I don't know. Horikio. I mean, he did set up the entire seance thing, so that is a little odd, but nothing really about that. Because, I mean, he was talking the entire time the murder was going down as well. And so, granted, I mean, you would think if he's moving around, the people would be able to tell. But then again, they kind of did that same thing in Danganronpa 2, where um, Noel was able to figure out that, uh, what's his name, Terry Terry was talking from beneath them, even though that should have been super obvious. Trying to think of like characters you didn't really see very much of, um, like back when Angie died, because they would have had to have probably leave soon after to go get set up for the seance. Oh, was it Kivo? Did Kivo do it? Because I mean, they did mention the thing about the. Uh, I thought it was odd that his flashlight function is a. Uh, used and they did like when they said something about oh he must have used a light or a candle or something uh Shuichi was like I don't know about that I mean it could have been Kibo but trying to think for it to have been Kibo I mean, it, I mean, that doesn't... I don't really have any reason to suspect him as killing uh, Angie, though. I mean, the flashlight thing is definitely a little odd. Because uh, I can't really think of how else that could be used other than the fact that it would have helped him uh, move around underneath. Now, that doesn't... Uh, that also could just be a red herring, right? Like, that could be something that gets brought up during the trial, but then that's not actually the answer. So the evidence could be important in that sense, but it doesn't necessarily... Uh, It's not necessarily definitive. I don't know. I mean, Maki, you know, she's a little, little, little odd acting. I mean, she had reason to kill Angie. In the sense that she obviously wasn't a big fan of Angie's, like, cult stuff and everything. But, 
I think if she killed Angie, then I don't think she killed Tinko. I don't think she would kill both of them. Yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll maybe, uh, we'll, we'll think about it as we make our way over to the trial grounds. Is there anyone, like, standing around or anything? Okay, everybody's at the trial grounds. I don't know. I might pause and like kind of look through the truth bullets again to come up with a. I mean, I like to, you know locking an answer, so to speak. It's probably a little bit more fun that way to. Oh dear. Have an actual guess as opposed to just being like, "Oh no, who did it?" So it appears we've all gathered, but it seems there are less and less of us. Oh. Less friends mean it much harder to solve mystery. Don't worry. Well, don't worry. I'm sure you've gotten a little smarter by now, Gonta. Mm. Yeah, Gonta do his best to help. Mm. Oh, I'd want you to at least graduate from super idiot level to at least Kaito idiot level. What? What's that supposed to mean? Are you okay? More importantly, are you okay, Kaito? Ah. Yeah, I'm feeling better now, but wow, Makiro sure does pack a punch. I don't know. It's your fault. <laughs> You don't need to worry about our dwindling numbers. There are only dipshits have died so far. That being said, I know it's a tall order, but try and use your brains this time. So I don't have to use mine. Hoo-ya! These golden brain cells of mine are a gift to the entire world. Acceptable. It's as though every time you open your mouth, you become less likable. Rest in peace. Tua, please lend us your power. But please stop saying Tua. Well, yeah, yeah. Kibo could have been the one who killed Tinko then, right? Because, I mean, he bought into the cult shit as well. And Samugi, it did seem like, he, I can't really remember if he put sufficient on Tenko. I know Samugi did. So it could have been that, like, Kiba was convinced Tenko killed, uh, Tenko killed Angie, therefore he killed Tenko. Now, the only problem with that is that he was originally well no he didn't want to be part of the seance right he was kind of forced into it and he was resistant to being a member of the seance so if he had planned all that ahead of i don't know i mean i, I do like the idea of kibo being the one that killed tenko but that's not gonna be our answer right i mean um unless we think tenko killed angie which um I don't think so. I don't know. I'm going to pause and kind of look through the truth bullets again and then come up with an answer. Okay, so after thinking about some more, I still ain't really got an answer. Uh, I do like the idea of Kivo being Tinko's killer. I feel okay about that. There's not that much concrete evidence to go on other than, like, I feel like he has a motive in the sense that it's possible he suspected Tinko of killing Angie. He seemed kind of fairly devoted to the Atua stuff. Um, that would maybe cause him to want to uh, kill her. Maybe he, like, you know, suspected it but didn't think he could prove it or something like that, so he decided to take matters into his own hands. It's, it's weak, but I really don't have anyone else I feel that good about. And then as for Angie, uh, I don't know. I mean, I did make this connection that the duct tape was what prevented... Because I didn't notice that it said, until I was looking through the truth bullets, that considered the later laceration, the injury in the victim's forehead was not bleeding. So I'm guessing that was because of the duct tape. Now... I don't really know what purpose that serves, and we still don't really know what could have caused the the laceration. I'm thinking that um, so maybe honestly, for I don't really have a reason for it at all. Um, but Himiko being the killer of Angie for some reason just keeps sticking in my mind. Cause I mean. Assuming that this is true and that it could only be, uh... I mean, Samugi maybe, because she did very quickly try and put the blame on Tenko. But we don't really have any real reason to suspect her. Um, I don't really know the answer to how they were able to do the stuff with the door. I mean, Kokichi just seems way too obvious that I feel like he's not actually involved in it. But, you know... 
that's just based on like initial guess that there's more you know if it gets to be more and more concrete right but based on just initial gut i have a hard like i, I don't see why kokichi would show off that he can lockpick like that if he's the one who actually um was the one who used his lockpick to like relock the door and everything and bring suspicion on himself so i'm gonna say himiko for angie and kibo for tenko I'm not like very confident at all, but I feel like if we gotta lock someone in, let's do it. Cause I, nothing's jumping out of me. Is there what happened to Angie, whom the two love most of all? Oh, you know. He shouldn't have relied on a two in the first place. But seriously, it's kind of funny seeing a robot believe in a god, especially a two. I also. So what? Robots can believe in a god. Indeed. I should have even met Angie. Angie had a similar experience. Hearing voices, I mean. <laughs> you might call it an inner voice. It tells me. What to do whenever I'm in trouble? Got a minute? How long are you gonna say that for now? Two and ghosts don't matter right now. Jeez. Yeah, the trial this time is gonna be rough. We got caught in Monokuma's trap. Oh yeah, I guess I forgot about Maki, right? I forgot I suspected her until just now. Do I think Maki could have done it? Um, maybe. I don't know. Maki or Himiko? Maki or Himiko? Maki makes more sense. Himiko's the more out there answer. Now, last time, picking the more out there answer paid off. Maki. I just felt like so something about her just felt off to the investigation. I can't really think of any specifics. I just, like, I remember having that feeling. Now, I don't really remember too much of the Angie investigation because that was yesterday, but... Or most of it was yet, or so, some of it was yesterday. Was it today? God, I don't know. My mind is messed up. Um, no, I think we did. We did most of the Andy stuff today. It was just that initial like first ten minutes or so was yesterday. Maki or Himiko? Maki or Himiko? Eeny meeny, miny mo. Catch a tiger by the toe. If he hollers, let him go. Eeny meeny, miny mo. I don't know. I like Himiko. Well, I don't really like Himiko, but I like Himiko as the, uh... I don't know. It just feels like the more out there answer than Maki. So we're going to go Himiko still, but not very confident. Yeah, the trial is the time is going to be rough. We got caught in Monica Mish trap. His trap. That's right. I made the fourth floor so scary on purpose to prevent me from investigating. All right already. No, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah, there's no way. And plus, I don't want Maki to die. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just gonna hope that she's not the killer. Hey, so. Chuichi, say something. Huh? What should I say? Speech, speech, speech. Okay. Two and Ghost don't matter right now. The culprit is among us. Max an awful sus lately, Maki. Almost like there's an uh... imposter among us. So, in the end, the culprit really was. Oh, it's nothing. We can talk about it once the trial starts. Interesting. Mm. Going to do his best to help. Please wait. It's true, though I do not know if it can be attributed to God, per se. I hear an inner voice guide me when I don't know what to do. I can't explain why, but I believe that voice will lead me to hope as long as I listen to it. On your knees! Shut up! Why the fuck is a robot talking about God anyway? It's unseemly! You're so dumb. I hear her voice is probably just a radio or something, like in taxis and stuff. That is not funny. It was unwise of me to confide in you all. Listen up! Try using your brain so I don't have to. My golden brain cells are gifting the entire world. <laughs> I respected Angie and Tinko so much since the moment we met. That's a lie. Shut up! Shut up! Nothing's gonna be solved by crying about it. All right already. Besides, that was a lie, wasn't it? It's a lie. Yeah, if you guys have figured me out already, there's no point in keeping up with the, the act. Kikichi uh, never changes, no matter what situation he's in. Damn. This trial's gonna be rough since I couldn't do any investigating. I mean, did Kaito do it? I mean, I don't know. I haven't really been thinking about Kaito, but I mean, it's possible. Because, I mean, he was the most opposed to uh, Angie doing the thing, but... And he could just be lying about the whole ghost thing, and he was actually creeped out by... Um... 
the idea of having to be the one to kill Angie, so to speak, to prevent the Moda from going through, or the resurrection. Hmm. Why did the seance fail? I never did figure out why. See, still more interested in that than the case. Yeah, I don't really get the whole seance thing being important, like... Because, I mean, I feel like the obvious answer is that she was dead by the time they, uh, they finished singing the song. As usual, we walk towards the elevator in silence. As soon as we remaining survivors stepped aboard... We descended. Perhaps because there were fewer of us, the elevator seemed to move faster. Then we fell, faster and faster, downward into the black. Elevator stopped, and just like always, the doors parted slowly. The light that shines on us from the other side, the bright light of our future. Or is it? Uh oh. Boy, they look really depressed. Must be because there's even less participants now. Oh. Don't say they look depressed. You'll make Mana them sad. <laughs> as much as I'd love to keep hearing this adorable back and forth, Stop it. let's hurry up and get this started. X and last, the class trial begin. I hope you enjoy it to your heart's content. Third class trial is about to begin. Angie Onaga, the ultimate artist. He created the ultimate academy student council to try and prevent the killing game. And Tinko Chabashira, the ultimate Aikido master. He hated men, but I don't think she hated the terrible killing game even more. Two were killed by her. We're both trying to stop the killing. And who was the one who killed them? Was it one person? Two different people? We need to pin that down in this class trial. In order to live, we have to find the truth. And I will fight for it. I will fight with truth and lies in this class trial. You already said that, Shuiji. Get some new material, buddy. Yeah, I'll save. Maybe you're gonna twist my arm about it, I guess I'll save. Dang, do we, do we have any uh, skills? We have five points. I, mean, I don't really think we want anything then. I guess we just save up. I don't even know if there's anything we can buy for five. I guess there's this stuff. Reveals V points effective during. As oh, so you could see it maybe without being able to. Uh... See it without having to go to focus. Yeah, I don't find the screw scrums are that difficult. Um, higher scheme will like up more freely. Increase the amount of letter cubes. Makes it easier to push the opponent back. Safety for it. Moves the time penalty for... I mean, I don't know. I don't really think the investigate the excavation stuff is that bad, actually. I mean, you have such a high amount of time that you can kind of brute force it. Tension gauge will increase at a faster rate. I don't even know what the tension gauge is, if I'm being honest. Except those, the reticle is on. I mean, that seems kind of interesting. But, I mean, you can kind of just read it. I mean, is there anything we want to save for? I mean, I guess this. Actually, honestly, the de lower delay would be nice. So, I think we just save for that. Because none of these seem all that great. So, uh, yeah. We're going to say, 
Himiko for Angie, Kibo for Tenko. I don't know. I'm not, like, I'm very unconfident of those. I was more confident in, uh, the Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 guesses, or Chapter 1, um, I don't know if I, I didn't really lock anyone in, but I was like, it was definitely Shuichi, but... And then Kurumi, I was, like, not that confident on, but I felt like there was a better chance that she ended up being the killer. <laughs> now then, let's begin with the basic explanation of the class trial. During the trial, you'll present your arguments for who the culprit is and vote for who done it. Vote correctly and I'll punish everyone besides the... Also, refusing to vote will result in your yeah, death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, smiles, everyone. It's showtime. But, like, why Let's even have that? Why not yeah, just let me troll vote? Away. How is the game made any better by making me burn a retry if I don't vote? Sorry, everyone. I don't think I'm going to be much help this time. And you could just auto-lock in whatever, you know, the curse is on if you want to force a vote. Because of Monokuma's disruptions, I couldn't do a thorough investigation. I can tell Monokuma is overcompensating to hide his self-consciousness. Next time, spend Less time fixing your hair and more time investigating, spaceman. Shut up! I don't need to hear some comedy act from you two weirdos. You're in the wrong game, then. Who did it? Who killed Angie and Tenko? Do not let your emotions hasten your judgment. There may be two killers. Or none at all. Maybe they both just died of heart attacks. So, our other culprit. Might not be one of us here. Oh, does she think it's the the resurrection thing? Well, we know the ritual didn't go through, so that can't be it, unless the game just lied to us about the instructions. What do you mean? The transfer student. Well, actually, let me see. Does it say there's only one Necronomicon? I mean, I guess that could be, there could be like a second Necronomicon that was burned up, but... Yeah, burn this Necronomicon to ashes. So, I mean, it could have happened because the Necronomicon was not burned. So, and plus you, you would find some ashes on one of the effigies, I would assume. So. Maybe our resurrected transfer student dragged Angie and Tenko into the grave. Stop it! Stop making stuff up! I mean, I'm not against that idea, but there, there seems to be, like, evidence that actively contradicts that, so. I can't Say entertain it. Shuichi. It'll be a mess if this keeps going on. Uh, what if Sumugi's a ghost? Did she ever consider that? Is it even possible for Revive Corpse to be the culprit? Well, in the interest of being thorough, I should clear things up here. Okay. Monokuma, Effigy songs upside down. I assume Necronomicon. This crime was committed by the recently deceased. They came back to life and killed two of our classmates. Yeah, how do I play this game? I thought exactly. So, ritual did work? Okay, so I'm probably that one, but we'll Mr. let it play Rick? through. I wonder. Angie did say she was going to bring Rantaro back. Yes. Rantaro Please, quit was making your hands like that. The culprit is the late Rantaro Amami! Uh huh. Please, stop it! Okay. Shuichi, say something. Shuichi ain't saying nothing. Okay. Were all those statements this correct? <laughs> I can't remember when it popped up. I think it was like the fourth or so fifth dot. Ritual did. Yeah. That's wrong. Okay, off to an easy start at least. I don't think Angie's ritual succeeded. According to the Necronomicon Monokuma showed us, you have to burn the Necronomicon in the ritual. After repairing the effigy, burn this Necronomicon to ashes. Be caution. Uh, use caution. Be mindful of the carbon dioxide poisoning. Sprinkle the ashes on the effigy and repeat the name of the deceased three times. If Angie's ritual had succeeded, the book would have been gone. So she must have been killed before the ritual was complete, since the book was still intact. Then, going to think Rantaro probably not culprit. Oh, I guess you're right. Well, duh. There's no way a dead person could resurrect. Now hold on a sec. 
second. I can't let that comment stand. Sure, everybody knows that you can't bring the dead back to life. But it's easy at the Ultimate Academy, as long as you use the Necronomicon. What are you talking about? There's no way that's possible. But it's true. I never lie about motives. Daddy said so, so he can't be wrong. Raising the dead is totally possible. Hey. Man, I can't believe you guys wasted such a perfectly good motive. You should have let me use it to bring Mono Dumb back to life. But, but, but. Mono Dumb is still alive, though. Yeah, but he's a robot. Does that really <laughs> I'm count? Just kidding. I wouldn't waste the resurrection on Monodem's corpse. Get him, Monodem. He's next. Oh? So resurrecting the dead was actually possible this whole time? There's no way it's possible! There's no way that could happen, idiots. Monokuma is trying to confuse us. Let's hurry up and find out who the Blackened is. I feel like that Angie has a special, uh, X mark. If our transfer student isn't got, like, a culprit, little... then blame falls to one of us. Is supposed to be wings? And a halo? Who? Who did it? Step aside, Half Pint! I'll handle this! I don't know about Tenko, but I'm pretty fucking sure Keo murdered Angie! Okay. Well, I don't Why? think so, but... I mean, you know, there is the katana, I guess. Now we know that anybody could have gotten it, but. Don't play dumb with me, creep show. I already know what happened. It's not the craziest guess, I suppose. Not having any information whatsoever. It's not one of those where it's like, it's so absurd. How could you even come to the conclusion to suspect this person? The culprit used a katana to kill Angie. Now this does mention the part about yeah, anybody could enter the lab. And it was found in Keo's research lab. Hey. Which makes you, Keo, automatically suspicious. But anyone could have taken that katana, you see. Yeah, can I agree with that? So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. You were the only one who cared about that thing, Keo. I did much? not care about some katana. Did not care. Just admit it, you shit-eating worm. What the hell is this? You went to the classroom, broke in. Broke in? <laughs> Whether Keo had a key or not, Angie still would have... Oh, broke. I thought you meant broke into his lab. Okay. I thought the contradiction there was, uh... You know, you didn't need to break into his lab. I mean, I agree that it was found in the research lab, but... I don't agree with the conclusion. I did not care about some katana. Just admit it, you shitty worm. He went to the classroom, broke in, and murdered the fuck out of Angie. Oh yeah, I'm a fucking genius. And none of those really jumped out to me. We're here, really, the culprit. Does that story fit the facts of the case? We should think about it from the beginning. The now, what are the? There's Samugi's account. Kokichi's lock picking. Art Labs back door. To kill Art Angie, Labs and it was found in Keo's research. Wow. I mean, this is true, but I don't, yeah, okay. I mean, I had to test it, but yeah, I mean, like, I, I agree, but like, I, I wanted to, I want to bring up the fact that anybody could have gotten the katana, but the culprit used a I katana guess it's not what they want Angie. here. And it was found in Keo's research lab. Now, as for like, didn't care about it. I mean, because it's not like it was locked up or anything. Which makes you, Keo, But no, we're, 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 that would be disagreeing. But we're not really trying to disagree with him there. Anyone could have taken that katana. Like, say, why isn't that an option? So that rusty katana was the murder weapon. So I guess on a... Um... I guess it's probably just front door on you were the only one busted in. About that thing, Keo. I did not care about some katana. Just admit it, you shit-eating worm. You went to the classroom, bro. Uh, sir? Bro. 
Angie still would have let him into her lab? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so never mind. It's Samugi's account. The culprit used a katana I feel like this Angie. one's kind of bad because there's like several different contradictions. I see what they lab. want there. Like, there is that Which hint. You kill. Automatically suspicious. But, uh... <laughs> I still feel like it's one of those where, like, there's several viable answers and you're supposed to just pick the one the game wants. Wait, did it, did it, oh, it missed? Come on. Just admit it, you shit eating worm. You went to the classroom, bro. I keep doing that. Yeah. That's wrong. Now, I don't like that one because the hint, yeah, the hint does make sense. No, but you have to get it wrong for her to cuz like what she says there, like you broke in doesn't really jive with the uh, just Sumugi's account without that hint, you know? Where, where, isn't that like our first thing? Because like the idea that the door was locked is a bigger contradiction than that she wouldn't. Because uh... like you only can see the flaw in her logic once you see the hint. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because when you get it wrong, then she says the thing about, oh, she, she would have let him in regardless. Like, that's not what she's saying with just the actual contradiction that's shown in the debate, I guess, is, is what I'm getting at. So that's not, not my favorite prompt. Isn't that right, Tsumugi? Yeah. Before Angie locked herself up in her research lab, she said she wasn't going to open up for anyone but student council members. And Kyo is not a member. She wouldn't have opened the door for him. But, I mean, she did use the phrase, broke in, you know? Kyo couldn't have killed Angie even if he wanted to. It's not like the prompt says, or, or, you know, the contradiction is, oh, she let him in or something. Now, if it had been phrased like that, then yes, Sumugi's account makes more sense, but that's not the way it's phrased. I had no desire to kill her in the first place. So whoever killed Angie must have been one of the student council members, yeah? I, I was doing a bit to lead you to the right answer. Can't believe you actually got it. Oh, how clever. You can just ignore her, Gonta. The remaining student council members are Gonta, Kibo, Sumugi, and Himiko. Well, it can't be Himiko. She was besties with Angie. Oh... I trust their friendship. You guys do too, right? Yeah, of course. Can we trust their friendship so readily? Obviously. Let's believe in them. That trims our list of suspects down to three. Gonta, Sumugi, and Kibo. Well... Yep, yep. The culprit is one of those three people. You mean one of those two people. Because a robot ain't people, Jack! Rude. I will let that remark slide. Anyway, aren't these accusations just a tad too hasty? What else? The culprit should confess already! Gonta, Keyboy, or Samugi. Well... Wait, why have we disregarded Tinko? I mean, I guess because at that point, Tinko wasn't considered a member of the student council anymore since she had betrayed them, but... No, not Gonta! Gonta would never kill Angie! Yeah, Gonta's a gentleman. You shouldn't suspect either of us. Hey, stick up for me too. Gonta definitely not hurt anyone. Torture Gonta if you don't believe. Let's let's not do that. Torture might be a bit too far, but Gonta and I aren't the culprits. And I'm not the culprit either. Jeez. Gonta I'm not, not the culprit. I'm not the culprit. Okay. Art Lab's front door, back door, lock picking Necronomicon. Front door. Uh, the door is locked, but Kokichi opened it by picking the lock. Sliding lock was locked from the inside. Kokichi's lock picking. Stability. 
Necronomicon. Angie attempted to carry out the book's resurrection ritual. Surely the and Samugi's account. She would not unlock the door unless someone from the student council asked her to. None of these jump out at me. Gentlemen, not betray student council. Not totally impossible. A dead chick can't be the culprit. Dead chick can't be the culprit. Only student council members had access. Yeah, only student council members had access out late at night. I'm kind of paying attention to this one more. But it's definitely not me. Is that a robophobic remark? Okay. There are several suspicious statements, but one is obviously inconsistent. I'm gonna pay attention more to the, this one over here. Surely there must be some suspect outside the student council. Surely there must be student council. I thought Tinko did it. A dead chick can't be the culprit. Why? It's not that far fetched, but there's no no contradiction on that side. Is that a robophobic remark? Okay. Well, let's pay attention to the other two now. Uh, we must consider other gentlemen. possibilities. Surely there must be suspects outside the not student council. Uh, that's utterly impossible. It's utterly impossible. Do you have an alibi? Not just, anyone open the door. not just anyone could open the door. Only student council. Okay, so then we use Kokichi's lock picking. Members had access. Okay. I heard it. He heard it. No, it wasn't just student council members that could have opened that lab door. Hmm. What was it you said earlier about Kyo opening the door, Shuichi? Unless you're a student council member, you can't enter Angie's lab, right? I was referring to Keo. He couldn't have done it, but you could have. Because I saw you open the classroom lock by picking it. Okichi pulled out some thin needles and stuck them into the keyhole of the lock. Kiki, click, click, clack. There, open says me. Oh, that happened? I totally forgot. So you're going to pretend you don't remember, huh? <laughs> Quit glaring at me like that. Of course I remember. Yeah, I did it. I killed Angie. Oh, dang. I didn't even suspect Kokichi. Wait, what? What did you just say? I picked the lock to her lab, snuck into the room, and then, wham, killed Angie. The culprit was me. Well, all alone. I guess that's an open and shut case, Johnson. What? Sprinkle some gold leaf on him and let's get going. What are you saying? Is this some kind of joke? Nah, no joke. I thought that if I confessed, I could atone for my sins. And it helped. I feel so much better. Whew! Wait, so Kokichi really is culprit? I mean, it's possible still. Um, just because he's coming out and saying he's the culprit doesn't necessarily mean that he's not the culprit. No, he's lying. I think. Maybe? He's lying. I'm certain of it. No, no. Definitely not a lie. I killed Angie. I mean, I assume we'll Should find you some. Guys uh, believe the culprit when they confess. I mean, we just, you know, ask him about what happened. If we, there's any contradiction in his story compared to the facts of the case, then we know he's lying. Then let me ask you, culprit, how did you lock the room? Huh? Well, it's the same as opening it. You pick the door closed from the outside. No, that doesn't make sense. Huh? What does it make sense? Can't you lock a door by picking it? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe, but that's not how the culprit locked the room. They used a different method. Yeah, so I'm guessing it's that they left via the back door and then something to do with the katana. I have no clue what the answer is, but it's something to do with the katana maybe allowed them to lock the door behind them. Um, 
Because, you know, there, where is it? Backdoor that mentions how the sliding lock was very easy to, uh, to move. So, like, maybe if you, like, kept the effigy sw swinging and then the handle hits, I, I don't know. I mean, it seems incredibly unlikely, but, you know, there's been several incredibly unlikely things in the game so far, so. What different method? Yeah, Mumbles. Use your big boy voice and explain yourself. Uh, there were two doors to the classroom, and the one locked last was... The back door. Oh. I can always try to hit A instead of Y there. The back door. That's how they made this a locked room mystery. The back door had a sliding lock, yes. How was it locked from the outside? Magic. The culprit used a certain tool. Certain tool. Find mine? Oh god. Okay. How does this work again? Okay. I, I know what I'm doing. Promise. Okay, there's the katana. What's this other thing? Oh, the sickle? I don't think it's the sickle. I never really considered the possibility. Uh, let's see what's... Oh, we got time to burn, so we'll see what the other option is over here. Okay, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Is that the sheath? I have no real clue. Okay, I think we just have to... I'm gonna go katana here. Oh my god, my time. How do I pick it? You. Okay. I see it. The gold leaf katana that was stabbed into Kaede's effigy. Now I have no clue what the answer is supposed to be, but uh, I kind of thought the same thing. To hit the knob of the sliding lock to lock the door. But I have no like I don't know what the plausible explanation is. So the gold leaf was on the sliding lock because. Because I mean that's kind of what I thought, but I didn't know if it was going to be the more straightforward explanation of just the gold leaf was there because they used the katana and it got on their hands. Because when the katana hit the lock some of the gold leaf rubbed off on it. The gold leaf on that katana did peel rather easily. Hmm, that evidence rings a bell. Specifically, a school bell. Huh? Are you talking about a different school? What school was it? <laughs> what school could it have been? Now, now, that doesn't matter anymore. Let's not dwell on the past. Ooh, the gold leaf landed on the sliding lock when the katana touched it. So that means the culprit used the katana to move the sliding lock, right? But how? But wait, how did they move it with the katana? And from outside Angie's lab? I don't know, did they like have it start spinning and run out real quick? The clue that might give us the answer is the layout of the area itself. Or what are you talking about? The layout of the area itself. Because, I mean, the katana does line up. Like, if you were to spin the effigy, I guess, it would potentially hit the lock. But, um... It was an odd setup, after all. The katana stabbed into the effigy. The effigies hung upside down. Angie didn't do that as part of the ritual? No. Nowhere in the Necronomicon did it say you had to hang the effigies. If it was not part of the ritual, then it must have been for a different purpose, right? Different purpose. Culprit somehow used the setup to lock the room. Now, guys, I need to know the reason behind every step of that setup. Or I don't know. If I do it that way, the way the culprit locked the room should be clear. Okay, we're we we're, we're driving, dude. How do I, do I what do I drive with? Is it A? I think it's A.
Okay, good. At least we'll be able to figure stuff out via context clues here, because I have no clue what the answer is. By God, he's a driver. So apparently it's actually okay to hit the Monokuma in these sections. Um, I was under the impression that it'd be a penalty, you know? Because it's like you're harming Monokuma, which is no bueno. What turned the handle of the sliding lock? I don't know, dude. Bro, you mean Effigy's hand, the katana's hilt? I mean, the, the, the hilt, I guess. Come on. Like, this whole section just takes too long. Like, the minigame's not awful, it's just very slow. It does just, like, it just feels worse than the, uh, whatever it was called in Danganronpa 2. Maybe it'll get better, in, like, later on if it gets faster, but it's just, like, you know. And really, it's just the transitions that take forever. Is the is the main thing? Like I mean, it's like you got like 25 seconds. Okay, it's not that long, but it's like a good like 20 seconds between finishing and before you even get to guess. I mean, maybe it's like 15, but it's still too long. What was done to make the katana uh, sliding lock was tampered? Katana was stabbed into the FPV. Bro, that's a lot of words. Yep. We're we're driving. By God, he's going in a straight line. Can anyone stop this madman? Uh, get overtaken. Now, what's the question? How was the FNG manipulated to make the katana affect the lock? I don't know. It was like spun or something. I don't really know the answer. Okay, swinging it back and forth, spinning it. I'm going to say spinning it. Now, how does that work? No fucking clue. It like you started, That's it. You, you like the reason the culprit stuck the katana into the effigy. Like I said, I mean, I kind of thought that prior to the trial starting, but I was also like, "That's kind of dumb. <laughs> it doesn't really make any sense." Was so that it would hit the sliding lock as the effigy spun. Effigy spun. That's right. If you spun the effigy, the rope it was hanging from would twist. It just seems like it'd be very yeah. easy for it to if just never go, hit. The rope would unwind, and the effigy would spin the other way. And of course, the katana would spin with it. I see. So the culprit used the katana's counterspin to push the lock into place? Like, what if it just got stuck there and then made it super obvious? The culprit simply needed to spin the effigy's rope and then swiftly leave. This would cause the spinning katana to hit the sliding lock. And thus was the back door of an empty classroom locked from the inside. I mean, even though I think, like, logically that's a little, yes, that's little far-fetched, there's locked. enough hints to guide you there that it doesn't bother me at all. By using the effigy with the katana. A plan born from the heart of a sword traveling through the air to intercept us. What? Oh, but could it have moved the slide box so easily? Yes. 
The sliding lock was pretty loose. A little push could move it. As long as the spinning katana hit the lock, it would have slid into position. Even if the culprit failed the first couple times, they could keep trying until it locked. Which is why the culprit chose to strike at nighttime as to avoid detection. Yeah, but how did they ensure that it was going to perfectly replicate the AI? Uh... Because, I mean, you have to assume that they start it spinning and then they instantly have to, like, leave, you know? Yes. I guess if it didn't, I guess if it didn't work, they could just walk back in there. So, yeah, I guess that, that does make sense. Are you saying it's the student council's fault? But yeah, I mean, that's not, it, it's a little far-fetched, but it's not so bad. Especially because there's plenty of hints to guide you in that direction. I didn't say that. In any case, the culprit probably used the murder weapon for this trick. It had to have been the right length to hit the sliding lock from the effigy. The culprit couldn't find a blade long enough in my lab, so they settled for the katana. The other effigies were only hung up, so we'd think it was some kind of ceremony. That way, we wouldn't notice the lock trick. But, Kokichi did say earlier that he could have picked the lock closed. I don't want to completely ignore that possibility. Yeah. I mean, nobody I should be ruled out. The culprit would have done all this just for a distraction. If that's the case, then Kokichi's confession earlier was actually... Seriously? You fucking lied again? Cough it up! What if he lied about lying? Oh, man. You guys got me. Okay, I'm not the culprit. You're telling the truth this time, right? I want to say I'm lying, but I'm not. Why did you say you were the culprit? I uh, wanted to lure the culprit out. Because the first, first 30 minutes of every trial have to be, you know, kind of like not that important so we can, you know, drag it out. Um, I'm just here for the comedic relief. I'm just doing my job, if making things entertaining. If I the culprit, then the real culprit would agree as well. You get me? And if they pressured me to confess, then that would have looked mighty suspicious. I mean, it seems like a very basic plan. Sheesh. Darn it. It didn't go my way because Shuichi butted into my plan. Yeah, sure. You and your fucking lies. Go sit in the corner and play with yourself. Don't, don't do that, actually. Okay, At least, I'll start right now. You can uh, just wait until you get to your room. All right. So, who's the asshole who set up this locked room mystery? Mew, I can't hold it up anymore. What's the matter? You going soft on me now? Who made the locked room mystery doesn't matter since anyone could have done it. Okay, with, with the horniness, that reminded me that uh, we're like well over an hour. Because I was like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? And I looked at the clock and, uh, you know, um, we should go ahead and stop things here. Overall, this is actually a pretty good start to the, to the class trial. It's not quite as basic as, like, the first one, or not the first one, the second class trial, where it was like, okay, yeah, we know. I mean, the, the katana stuff was somewhat of a mystery, like... I mean, like, I had an idea that's what they were maybe going for, but I wasn't sure if it, it was actually going to be the answer, if it was going to be something more uh, straightforward, I suppose. But overall, a good start to the class trial. I'm ExtraCheese87. Stay tuned for the next part. And bye, guys.